Hey everyone, and welcome back to Bridge the Divide. Recently, while working on some upcoming projects, I came across a video on social media that I couldn't resist responding to. But I warn you, for this video, we're going back to TikTok, and I won't lie, it gets pretty painful. If dinosaurs actually existed, wouldn't their bones be everywhere? Hey, I warned you. Now to answer the question, no, the actual bones of dinosaurs would not be everywhere. What are everywhere, however, are the fossils of their bones. Fossils being the impression of the structure of a prehistoric organism preserved in petrified form or as a mold or cast in rock. So all in all, this is really just a very ignorant question she's asking. Because questioning if dinosaurs really existed simply because we don't see their actual bones lying all over the place is akin to questioning if humans existed like a thousand years ago just because we don't see their bones lying all over the place. Let's all put our critical thinking skills to the test this morning. Unfortunately, when you are hopelessly ignorant of a particular subject, all the critical thinking skills in the world are not going to help you. So why is it that the average Joe has never dug them up? Finding fossils is not something relegated only to professional paleontologists. Anyone and everyone can find a fossil, and they do quite often. You just need to know what you're looking for, and then you actually have to go and look for them. You remember that old tongue twister, She Sells Seashells? Well, it was originally a song written back in 1908, and the inspiration for it was a Victorian fossil hunter named Mary Anning, who discovered the first correctly identified ichthyosaur skeleton fossil when she was only 12 years old. So yeah, fossil hunting is not restricted to any one demographic. Anyone can do it. Like, why haven't you or I or anyone we know ever found a bone? Because you don't find bones, you find fossils. And just because you have never found one or your friends have never found one doesn't mean that fossils aren't everywhere all over the world waiting to be found. The real questions are, have you yourself ever actually gone out and deliberately looked for any? And two, if you did, did you even know what it was you were looking for? I myself have had the pleasure of visiting the fossil Rim Wildlife Center in Glen Rose, Texas numerous times as a Boy Scout, and we always came back with fossils. Now, while I understand that you lack a fundamental understanding of the subject that you're talking about, it's really important to remember not to narcissistically project one's own ignorance onto other people by using your own internal experience as a baseline for everyone else. And another thing, bones can completely decay within 20 years. True, while bones can decay within 20 years, that that measurement is not set in stone. According to the National Institutes of Health, human bones can decompose in as little as six years. And we also have evidence of human bones lasting thousands of years, such as Utsi the Iceman. It really all comes down to the conditions that the remains were exposed to. But these people are finding fossils that are intact that still have teeth attached? While not all fossils are intact, many are. And it doesn't stop at finding fossils with intact fossilized teeth. In 2020, this fossilized notosaur was excavated from 110 million year old rock in Alberta, Canada. The animal was so exceptionally well preserved that like a fossil within a fossil, we were actually able to determine the contents of its stomach. And like I stated before, what fine details are available to us in fossils is all dependent upon the condition conditions of the preservation. From 76 million years ago? Even longer than that. Hell, that notosaur I mentioned earlier was over 100 million years old. Dinosaurs were the dominant animal group throughout the Mesozoic era, which itself is divided into the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous periods. And that entire stretch of time lasted from 252 million to 66 million years ago. However, the oldest fossils ever found were those of cyanobacteria found in Archaean rocks in Western Australia that date back to 3.5 billion years. And if you're watching this video and have found a dinosaur bone, I would love to hear it. Okay, I watched your video and I have found fossils. Problem solved. But you have to remember, we don't find bones, we find fossils. Essentially, you're asking people on the internet to provide you evidence to support your understanding. But because your understanding is fundamentally flawed, it's led you to ask for evidence that doesn't actually exist. I'd love to hear the story. Message me. I already told you earlier, so you can just go back in the video if you need to. I honestly believe they put these creatures in front of us and made us believe it because of this. I'm sorry, giants? That that's where we're going with this? Oh, and I see after you made that grand assertion, you've added a bunch of images in the video with zero context. But that's okay, my little conspiratorial pseudoscientist. 
I'll add the context for you. First, that initial image has some text on it, and that quote is from Numbers 1333, and it's a reference to the Hebrew Nephilim myth. As for the image itself, it's actually an old one that's been circulating around the internet for some time, and it's supposedly the bodies of two giants that were excavated somewhere in the Middle East. But with a cursory examination of the image itself and an understanding of the apparent size phenomena, we can debunk this one quite easily. If you were to take any object within that image, say the bucket that's sitting behind the men, and bring it closer to the photographer, we know from the apparent size phenomena that it would get larger as it approached the camera. And this holds true for any of the objects within the image, including the men themselves. So understanding this, we can conclude that this is not a picture of the corpses of giants, because it's literally just a photography technique called forced perspective. The second image here is just a picture of Robert Pershing Wadlow, the tallest human being in recorded history, who in 19 40 was measured at 8 feet 11 inches tall. And if you can't tell that that third image is just a bad Photoshop, then I really don't know what to say. Other than the fact that that image was lifted directly from an article that was published on Skeptoid.com, which is the website for the Skeptoid podcast, which itself is a show dedicated to debunking science misinformation, urban legends, and conspiracy theories. Which means that the third image this TikTok scientist used to back her weird segue into giants was actually pulled from a source that directly debunks her claim. After all, all of our fallen ancestors have always talked about the Nephilim. Incorrect. The concept of the Nephilim is a purely Jewish creation, which is why you don't find mention of them or anything like them in any holy books around the world save for the Old Testament. And of course, she includes more images with zero context, so let's clear that up real quick. The first image is a slightly distorted photo of the Tablet of Shemesh, and that large figure depicted on the tablet is not actually a giant, it's the Mesopotamian sun god Shemesh, hence the name. The second image is of a replica of a statue of the Mesopotamian hero Gilgamesh holding a lion cub to represent his strength. The third image is the actual Gilgamesh statue. The fourth image is just a picture of an African lion. The fifth image is from the Ochre Alcove, which is a Fremont pictograph site in southern Utah. And while archaeologists are not exactly certain what is being depicted in that pictograph, some archaeologists concluding that it may have something to do with the Fremont people's interpretation of the afterlife, thanks to the internet, the image has become a associated with the ancient aliens conspiracy. And the sixth image here is of the victory steel of Naram Sin from the Akkadian Empire, and it depicts King Naram Sin of Akkad leading his army to victory over the Lullaby people of the Zagros Mountains. The fallen angels. Yeah, big ass giants. None of the images presented in her video depict Nephilim or even giants. This right here is the problem when someone scours the internet for a bunch of images so they can post them all over the place with no context as to what they depict. And if the meteor thing truly happened? I assume she's referring to the asteroid that initiated the KT extinction event, which was the demise of the dinosaurs. If something of that magnitude was to hit Earth, it'd be something like 10,000 nuclear bombs going off. Firstly, the word is pronounced nuclear, not nuclear. The asteroid that initiated the KT extinction event struck the Earth with the force of 100 teratons of TNT. That is equivalent to 4.5 billion times greater than the atomic explosion at Hiroshima. And how we determine the power of that impact is by examining the impact crater that it left behind. The Chicxulub crater, located underneath the Yucatan Peninsula, formed about 66 million years ago, is the second largest confirmed impact structure on Earth, and is the only one in which the peak ring is intact and directly accessible for research. Once again, a bare modicum of research into this topic would have cleared a lot of this up. How didn't everything get obliterated? Well, technically it did. The asteroid's impact completely devastated the surrounding area as far north as modern-day New Jersey, 1,600 miles away. It's also estimated that the resultant wildfires enveloped nearly 70% of the planet's forests. To put it in simple terms, the devastation was immense. But the real damage came afterwards as the impact event triggered irreparable climate change that resulted in the extinction of nearly 80% of all life on the planet. There wouldn't be anything left, let alone bones. This is really just a guess, but I don't think she seems to grasp just how big the Earth actually is. The asteroid that initiated the KT extinction event was itself only six miles wide. I think it goes without saying that in comparison to the Earth, that is quite small. And I'm thinking that it's that misunderstanding that's leading her to believe that the Earth should have been flash fried by the impact event. Come on, lady, this is an asteroid impact we're talking about, not the plot of a Nick Cage film. It's easy to connect the dots once your eyes are open. 
Well, yeah, just so long as you then use your open eyes to do some actual research into these topics so that you can talk about them coherently instead of making ridiculously ignorant claims. It's just another thing they made up to keep us from the truth. If they made it all up, then why is there evidence for these things all over the place? Fossils are constantly discovered all over the planet, even in Antarctica. The Chicxulub crater is directly accessible for study. So until you can demonstrate how the evidence or the predictive models or the scientific laws that we use to derive these conclusions are wrong, then everything you're claiming is just ignorance born incredulity. Truth is, giants existed. There is no evidence that giants ever existed. Giants meaning humanoids with sizes vastly exceeding the maximum range of Homo sapiens. And of course, she presents more images with no context. So let's run them down to make sure people don't get the wrong idea. This image is not a giant staircase. It's actually Ollantaytambo, which is an Incan ruin in Peru. Those aren't steps, they're agricultural terraces. This image is of a collection of ceremonial swords, which is located at the National Museum of Scotland. The large one in the middle belonged to the Semples of Elistun, who were stewards of the barony of Renfrew in the 13th century. The swords themselves were designed specifically for ceremony and were not used in battle. This image was debunked as photoshopped by Snopes back in 2019. This image is a photoshopped version of an actual picture of a skeleton found in the Sahara Desert. The original photo was taken during the research phase for the PBS project Skeletons of the Sahara. This image is from India in 1903 and depicts Professor James Rakelton standing with two unnamed twin brothers who were locally known as the Giants of Kashmir. Fun fact, those brothers were also elite riflemen and served as personal bodyguards for the Maharaja. This image was debunked as photoshopped by a Reddit user who was able to identify the photographic discrepancies, and this giant 30-foot skeleton is actually an art installation located in the Museum of Ecuador. The skeleton itself is presented as a reconstruction of a giant that existed in Ecuadorian mythology. However, we know that such an entity could not biologically exist for a number of reasons. Because the entity is essentially representing a giant human, we know from the proportions that the muscles themselves would not be strong enough to hold up the body. We also know that its sheer weight would snap its leg bones. Such an individual would also not be able to breathe adequately due to the extreme weight on its lungs and the surface area of its alveoli. And we also know that they would overheat because their square factored skin would not be able to dump the excess energy of their cube factored bodies. That very fact right there is exactly the reason why the largest mammals on the planet live in extremely cold environments. And this final image is actually a rotated photo of the Watonga Rock Formation in New South Wales, Australia. You actually may recognize it because it's often used by mud flood proponents as proof of giants. The problem is, those rocks only look like that at a specific time of day and from a specific angle. The image she showed you was the Watonga Rock Formation when you are standing parallel to the ocean. This is the Watonga Rock Formation when you are standing perpendicular to the ocean, which demonstrates that this is not nothing more than a case of pareidolia. Ultimately, I'd say that this has been a pretty good example of why TikTok is likely not the best source for information. I'd even hazard to say that individuals like this one probably don't even believe the crap that they're espousing. And they really only do so for the clicks and views elicited by those who want to watch the train wreck. Now, normally, I wouldn't go after such ground-scraping fruit. But the fact that she's tagging her videos with the hashtag truth talk, I think is enough to necessitate someone breaking down exactly why every Everything she's claiming can be easily debunked and therefore is complete nonsense. Be safe, be excellent to each other. I'll see you next time.